Good afternoon. How is everyone today? Welcome to this free live webinar called The Truth About Essential Oils from a Master Clinical Aromatherapist. My name is Becky Jo, and I will be with you for the next little while here. And my goal today is to teach you some things that you didn't know about essential oils. So welcome. Happy hump day. It is Wednesday. Happy March. It is March 1st. And I am really excited because that means spring is close when March comes. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to give gratitude to my guides and angels, including my fairies and elementals and my nature spirits that work very closely with me with essential oils and with my life's path and purpose. I would like to set the intention that this broadcast brings absolute positive high vibrating energy to all that watch or listen. And I would like everybody to feel amazing when they watch or listen. Okay, so I'm really happy you decided to take this journey with me. I have no doubt that if you are listening right now, your guides and angels have sent you here because essential oils probably are part of your life's path and purpose or an enhancement to your everyday well-being. I want you to know that part of my life's path and purpose is to help others find their life's path and purpose. And without you guys, my life's path and purpose would be non-existent. So thank you. I send you gratitude. So for those of you that are new to me, please let me formally introduce myself. I'm called the Holistic Healer by nickname. Well, like I said, my name is Becky Jo. I am a certified intuitive master herbalist. I am a certified master clinical aromatherapist. And I wear many other hats too. I'm a Reiki master. I do a lot of energy healing and work. I am a reverend. I am a certified angel and fairy card reader through Doreen Virtue. I do some hypnotherapy. I do abundance coaching. I do spiritual counseling. Um, I am a medical medium. And what I mean by that is that when people come to me, I have this incredible gift that I intuitively know what is physically going on in someone's body and I can very intuitively know what herbs and essential oils people's bodies need for balance or whatever it could be. I work very energetically with herbs and essential oils. Um, in fact, I am extremely close in working with fairies and elementals and nature spirits. Um, I've been seeing and hearing spirits and angels in Jesus since I was born. Unfortunately, I wasn't raised in a time when that was eh, approved of by society. So I spent many years in the closet about it. Since 2012, I, when I had a huge spiritual awakening that led me to realize that what was going on with me 
was that I was aligning with my life's path and purpose and that everything that had happened to me up till that point happened for a reason. And I know and understand why I went through every single thing that I've been through. I've been through a lot of traumas, a lot of hard times, a lot of things that uh, some people probably wouldn't even believe me that I've been through because I have overcome so much that people don't, don't see that side of me. They don't need to. I've healed myself very, very well. Body, mind, and soul. And that is what I work very hard to do for other people. So I work very closely with the angelic realm and um, with the realms of spirit and my spirit guides and um, with Jesus to help heal others. Um, since I began living my awakened life, I've developed a relationship with the divine very well. Well, I am tapped in, tuned in, turned on, and aligned with the higher power in myself and in other people. So, how did I get into essential oils? Okay, I'm going to just give you a very short history on this. So, I got into using essential oils and herbs about 10 years ago for myself because I was very sick, physically sick, and um, I had a lot of manifestations of dis-ease in my physical body. I had uh, been on a lot of medicines for a long time, and I just knew that when I was to the point where I was taking 14 medicines a day, that there had to be something else out there for me. I knew that I was in my early 30s, and this could not be the way my life was going to be. I was using a cane to walk and on the verge of being in a wheelchair. Um, I just wanted something better for myself, so I started to get educated on herbs and essential oils, which... I ended up going to school for after making myself a few things that um, worked amazingly. And then, you know, of course, friends and family wanted me to make stuff for them. And then it worked amazingly for them. So then I got myself formally educated and started using um, all natural everything. So along with the all natural um, goes, heal, you know, healing your body, mind, and soul, okay? So then I got into the energy stuff, and it was kind of like after my awakening, everything just came to me, and I knew exactly what and when, and, and it even still is now. Um, I know that I'm not done learning. I will never be done learning. I will never be done growing, and I want every single person to view their life that way, that you know, we're never done learning and growing. So even if you are experienced with essential oils, I really hope that you learn something today, okay? So enough about me. Um, one more thing, actually. I, during my journey with all of this and being a healer, I discovered about six years ago that distilling my own essential oils was part of my path too. I absolutely recommend it to everybody I talk to. If you are a gardener and you are into herbs, into plants, distilling your own essential oils is one of the best things you could ever do for yourself and your health. You not only get the essential oil, but you get the hydrosol too. Um, the hydrosol is kind of the water of the plant, and then you have the essential oil floating on top when you distill your own, and it is just beautiful, and the healing amazing properties and things you can do with them are endless. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit more in a little bit, but. For those that are absolutely brand new to essential oils, 
what are essential oils? Well, essential oil is the fluid that is inside the leaves, the stems, the flowers, the bark, the roots, and other elements of plants and herbs. Um, typically, it is uh, something that is done by, you know, steam distillation, which is, you know, what I do a lot of times. But there are many other forms um, and ways to get essential oils out of plants. Um, but what really is an essential oil? Okay, let's let's dig a little bit deeper here. Everybody knows what essential oils are for the most part, right? Essential oils have made it to the norms of society, and I think that's wonderful, and I'm very happy about that. As an aromatherapist, when I first started doing it, um, they weren't really in the norms very much, and uh, most people were like, um, essential what? So now that they are very much a part of the normal day-to-day, -day, it's really important to me to educate people so that when you are buying them, you are making sure that you're really truly getting essential oil. And for two, I want everybody to know that these are a sacred, sacred gift from God. These are very powerful and um, they, although they're meant for healing us humans, if they're used inappropriately, they can, they can hurt you too. And that is the truth. Just like anything, you know, if we aren't using something correctly or if we're disrespecting it, um, it, it, it can have um, repercussions. So, what is an essential oil? Essential oil is the part of the plant that, as the plants have evolved, they have to figure out and this is what's so cool is even plants, even herbs, even trees, even flowers have this universal intelligence about them. They know when it's time to grow. They know when it's time to flower, when it's time to seed, when it's time to, um, you know, die off for the winter and go into hibernation. Have you ever just stopped and thought how miraculous plants are? Like, truly, truly, I think about this every time I plant. I, you know, I, I have a greenhouse. I've been a gardener for a lot of years. And every winter when I plant seeds, it absolutely dawns on me how miraculous is it that I put a seed into the dirt or into the medium that you're using and you water it and you care for it and you tend to it. And, and the next thing you know, it develops roots and it grows. And depending on how well it's taken care of, it will um, just be this beautiful green lush plant, okay? So, depending on the atmosphere, the weather, um, you know, the insects in the area and the animals, these plants, depending on, you know, where they're grown in the elements, have, have had to develop a way to protect themselves from the weather and from insects eating them and from, you know, animals wanting to eat them. So they were intelligent enough to develop essential oils. Essential oils are truly what plants produce to protect themselves from that type of thing. Some plants, you know, make their essential oil to um, have a certain smell or a certain taste that animals won't want to taste or smell, so they'll stay away. Um, or birds, you know, or insects, same thing. And then, you know, other plants develop their essential oils um, to protect them, you know, from too much heat, too much cold, um, too much water, or too much drought. 
depending on the plant and depending on you know where they're grown they um produce essential oil and i just really think that's magical and i and miraculous and i I love telling that story because people that know about essential oils usually don't know that. They don't know why they're produced. So that is truly what they are. They're meant to be a, a form of protection for the plants. Um, and, you know, in the barks of trees and, you know, the peelings of citrus fruits is where the essential oils are, you know, and, and, Think about it. The peeling is what protects the the fruit when it's growing, right? So, you know, an orange is growing there, and you know it needs to protect itself from the elements or whatever it's protecting. And um, it makes perfect sense to me that the essential oil would be in the peeling because that's the protection, you know, of the fruit. So, anyways, the the plants produce these beautiful fragrant oils, um, which are you know, it contain it contains the true essence of the plant that it was taken from. How cool is that? So, you know, for me, when I when I'm growing these herbs and these flowers and 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 plants that I know I'm going to distill later, um, the more I care for them and the more I love them and the more I take care of them and the more love and joy and gratitude I give them, I'm not kidding you, the more essential oil they will produce. Um, you know, it has been said, I've heard somewhere that um, if you want more essential oil in your plants, then, you know, you need to starve them to do that, you know, because it makes sense that, you know, they go into protection mode and that's when they make, you know, produce the oils. But I, in my personal experience, that hasn't been the case. It's, it, it's been, you know, the more I love them and nurture them, the more they produce. So who knows? Only the plants know the truth there. But I think it's absolutely amazing the intelligence that nature has that we, we don't pay attention to. From day to day. So, anyways, um, the thing is, is that when we get these essential oils, um, you know, from the plant, they can be extracted. And there's so many different ways of extracting the oils. Um, the three most common methods of extraction are like steam distillation, um, expression, which is, um, you know, squeezing. And then um, there is solvent extraction, okay? Now this is really important. Um, the steam distillation method, the plant parts are exposed to the steam and then the high heat of the steam causes the essential oil to actually evaporate from the plant. And then when the vapor is cooled and the condensation of the oil and water is produced, and then since oil and water do not mix, they're, they're easy to separate as it goes down into the beaker. And that's exactly what I do when I'm distilling. And, and any of my friends and family that have watched me distill essential oils before, it is absolutely amazing. And, and if you can ever watch that process happen, you are blessed beyond measure. So the other one is expression. And expression is, is pretty much exclusively only for extracting like citrus oils. Citrus oils are very, very heat sensitive to the extent that the steam distillation would actually damage them. So we're not going to do that. The outer colored parts of the peel, like I said, hold pockets. Um, and if you have ever cut into a lemon or an orange peel, if you slice it just beyond the white part, you'll see the little pockets. Okay. so. 
the pockets actually secrete the oil from when they're um, pressed, you know, by hand or by machine. But through the machine pressing, you know, obviously is much more practical. But the entire process is done at room temperature. That way it does not damage the oil and it gives validity to the term, quote unquote, cold pressing. So if you've ever heard of cold pressing, that's what it is. We do that to make carrier oils too. So flowers that may not be able to withstand the pressure of cold pressing um, or, you know, distillation, the heat, they're soaked in a solvent. And that will extract the essence. So that's known as solvent extraction. So to separate the solvent from the oil, um, you have to actually evaporate the solvent at a high enough heat. But you have to do that without damaging the oil within. And when you do that, what's left is known as an absolute. So if you have ever heard of like jasmine absolute, that's one of the biggest ones. Um, that is, you know, jasmine flowers are, cannot withstand heat, nor can they extend being pressed like that. So we use the solvent to extract them. Um, the problem is with the um, extraction, the solvent extraction, a lot of people don't realize that um, like <sighs> Once it once it's evaporated, I mean, we use alcohol a lot of times, but you know, it's evaporated and everything. But um, absolutely anything that's an absolute or done by solvent extraction should never, ever, ever be ingested. I do not care what anyone tells you. That is the reason I had to bring that up because imagine how dangerous that might be if you're ingesting an essential oil that's an absolute that it's not the, really necessarily the essential oil that's so dangerous. It's the solvent that was used to make it. Um, So a lot of people will argue with me on that. That is my take on it. Um, I never ever suggest that you ever ingest a, a, an absolute, okay? So here's, here's the next thing. So we have our, our distillation um, extraction methods. And so then when these are done by the big companies or whatever, then they go, you know, to be sold. Well, unfortunately, now that essential oils have hit the norms, people really want to make money off these. And the problem being that sometimes they are not true essential oils, but the norms of society we believe everything that we see or hear. I don't know why, but we do. So a lot of times we're not getting a good quality essential oil. Even though a label will say 100% essential oil, know that it only has to have 3% essential oil in it to be considered 100% pure essential oil. So you may not be getting pure essential oil. So how do we test for quality? How do we know that what we're buying is really truly an essential oil? Good question. So one of the Easiest, best ways to do that is to put a drop of essential oil on your finger, okay? If it feels greasy, then it's probably had some sort of vegetable oil added to it or a carrier oil. They should never, ever feel greasy for the most part. 
Um, another way is to place a drop of essential oil in water. <clears throat> Excuse me. The essential oil should not dissolve or become opaque or milky. If it does, then it contains emulsifiers. And it probably was made for use in like cosmetics or, you know, industrial use. So you definitely, certainly do not want to use that directly on your skin if it was not, um, if it contains emulsifiers, okay? Another, another test that is pretty popular that a lot of people like to do is um, doing on a white, piece of paper, um, put a drop on there and let it dry. If there's a ring around the outside, it is not a true essential oil, okay? So those are the three most popular ways to tell whether your essential oil is, you know, actually a real essential oil or whether it is, in fact, um, either adulterated or mixed with something or fake. Um, it, you know, some other things that you can do too is use your intuition. That is uh, a big part of it. If you are somebody that's using uh, essential oils energetically, then, you know, you sure you sure are in with your intuition to begin with. And, you know, another piece of this is, holy cow, um, a lot of times when I have been, had somebody, you know, either gift me some essential oil um, or, you know, ones that I've even, in, in the beginning, I've bought ones that were fake without realizing it at first. Um, but you can most definitely smell it if it's chemically made, especially like if you are starting to use essential oils and you kind of get the, you know, they, they have an energy about them. Essential oils really do. They have an energy about them. So you can just kind of feel whether it is real or whether it is chemically made. You can also smell. Once you start using them, you can definitely smell the difference between something that's chemically made and something that's really truly um, an essential oil, okay? So the other thing is that the quality of essential oils that, that we use, it's, it depends on a long list of varying factors you know, whether it's a good quality oil or not. Um, so even if it's a good company, sometimes they can get a bad batch. Um, you know, soil quality makes a big difference. And if you're, if you're getting them from a company that doesn't use organic plants, the soil and the pesticides um, and, you know, toxins in the soil are definitely going to be in the essential oils. So um, that is something to be concerned about. Um, so, you know, there's many, many, many factors on what, you know, what exactly would make it a good quality oil. I really think that um, here's some simple rules, okay? Cheap oils are cheap, right? Um, just to make some simple rules here, if it's cheap, very, very cheap, like, um, you know, under $5 for a bottle, either the person selling it is, uh, somebody that wants to gift it to you, or it may not be real. Me personally, I do sell some of my fresh distilled essential oils cheap to people that I feel need them. But, you know, somebody that has good intentions like that, you know, that's, you know, use your intuition there too. Um, another rule of thumb, many oils are 
extended or, you know, have cheaper oils added to them. So please, please, please read your labels and ask questions because in, in the stores or wherever it is, um, unfortunately, and, and I know that this is hard to believe, but even people that own the store sometimes will buy, you know, the expensive bottles, but they will put cheaper oils in them. So please watch for that. Watch for, um, watch the labels for one to see if there's other stuff added to them or if it just says that there's essential oil in it. Um, and number two, that's a big way to find out is, you know, read the labels, you guys, read them. Because some, some will say, you know, basil oil or, you know, lavender oil. If it doesn't say lavender essential oil, then it might not be lavender essential oil. It might be lavender oil that has a little bit of lavender essential oil in it, but the rest is just, you know, like an almond oil or something. And people can get away with doing that. Um, so shops that are selling essential oils should always have testers there. Um, you know, try out the testers, make sure, make sure that that's really what you're getting. Okay. If all of the oils in a line cost the same, then they are not good quality oils. So like lavender should never cost as much as patchouli or sandalwood. I mean, they're all different prices. Okay. Depending on how much of a plant is needed to make that bottle of essential oil, that is what the price will be. Now, rose oil is always going to be extremely expensive. Um, lavender and peppermint are going to be cheaper, but, you know, it's, once again, you need to really use your intuition there. So, um, here's a little, here's a little smell test that I want to tell you guys that I, I learned. So I want you to write this down. I want you to, when you do this, take two of your essential oils you have at home, take two cotton swabs. I want you to dip one of the cotton swabs into a drop of each of the essential oils, okay? Close your eyes, smell the oil. Um, wait a little bit. And then re-smell them again. And then write down the scent that made you, how it made you feel, what it made you think, what it smelled like, and if the scent brought up any imagery for you. Um, as time goes on, your nose will become your greatest ally, honestly, because real true essential oils have an energy, a vibration. They are spirit, just they're, they're vibrational beings, just as we are. So if it's a real true essential oil, you will feel it. You will know it. Okay. Don't, don't be fooled. So I'm not going to um, go on and on about that too much. But um, I wanted to give you really quickly some of the emotional and metaphysical uses of aromatherapy. I only have a limited amount of time and I want to try to get as much in here as I can. Um, I want to make sure that you guys are, you know, making sure that your essential oils are real, okay? Here's the, here's the thing, too. Um, in, in making sure they're real, if you are buying essential oil from the grocery store, from Walgreens, from Walmart, any of those places, I don't want to call anybody out here, but you're not getting 100% pure essential oil. I'm sorry, you're not. It, 
and I and I've bought a couple of those just out of curiosity, just to see, you know, where where they're rolling at. And I'll tell you that some of them actually have some essential oil in them, but they're not they're not the real deal, guys. They're not. Be very careful buying them, you know, just from random companies on eBay and stuff too. I I'm not I'm not somebody that's for or against. Young Living or Dutera, I think both both of them have very good quality, beautiful essential oils. However, there really truly are other companies that are selling wonderful, beautiful oils too that aren't quite that expensive. Um, so with that being said, however, I would rather somebody spend way too much money on oils that I know for sure are real than spend a little bit of money on something that might hurt you. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. So actually I'm getting off track here. Before I go into the metaphysical uses, let's, let's talk some safety real quick. We don't have to go into it too much. Because I know that um, most of you, I mean, you can look this stuff up online. So I'm not going to get too much into it. But a few things that I really need to point out, okay? Um, when it comes to essential oils, here's, here's the biggest, biggest things that I need to tell you. One, and I was just talking to you about, make sure your essential oils are real. Do not use fragrance oils, potpourri oils, or perfume oils in place of essential oils ever. They are not pure, and some can actually do damage to your skin, you guys. They're, the types of oils, they're, they're made from synthetic substances. So when you purchase essential oils, please, like I said, please, please, please read the label. Make sure it says essential oil, not just oil, okay? Um, the other thing is make sure you are knowledgeable about the properties and actions of these before you're using them on your bare skin, okay? Essential oils are very, very concentrated plant constituents, okay? These are chemicals, you guys, okay? Even though they're natural chemicals, they're still chemicals and they can be strong and very intense. And they have energy to them. They're energetic. They're vibrational. So always keep in mind that although they're wonderful and healing if they're used correctly, they can also be poisonous and dangerous if not used properly. Okay? Always, always, I cannot express this enough. Keep essential oils away from children and pets. Away. Especially cats. Cats have toxic relationship with essential oils. Unless you are getting essential oils for your cat from somebody who is educated and knows exactly how much to give them. Please, please, please keep your oils away from the cat. Any pets or any children, but especially cats, okay? Now, here's another thing. You can have an overexposure to essential oils, either through your skin or through inhalation. And if you have an overexposure, you may feel nauseous, you may get a headache, you may get skin irritation, um, or like a spaced out feeling. If that ever happens to you and you feel like you have had too much, um, go outside, get some fresh air and know that um, getting fresh air will kind of, you know, help you get that out of your lungs and out of your system faster. If it's an essential oil that you've put on your skin and you are experiencing irritation or accidentally get it in your eyes, please. Dilute it with straight vegetable oil, not water. Vegetable oil. That is something that, that most people do not teach. That is something I want everyone to know. 
also, no matter what anyone tells you, never, ever, ever, <laughs> for any reason, no matter what, put essential oils in your eyes, okay? Keep essential oils out of your eyes. If this happens by accident, immediately flush the eyes with clean carrier oil, clean warm water, or full fat milk. If it doesn't alleviate the stinging and irritation, please seek medical attention immediately. Do not mess around. You need your eyes. Another thing that's really important is as we're starting to use essential oils and we're learning about them, please do skin tests on your <clears throat> on your skin before you put them directly on your skin. Some aromatherapists will tell you don't ever put them directly on your skin. Some will tell you it's okay. Me personally, from my experience, this does not mean that you agree with it or if anyone agrees with it, but my personal experience has been as long as you um, dilute a small amount and apply it to your skin, like on your inner arm, and, and you do not receive redness or irritation, it is okay to put them directly on your skin. Some of them, okay? Here is a list that I came up with with skin irritant essential oils that you should never, ever put directly on your skin, okay? Allspice, bitter almond, basil, cinnamon leaf, Cinnamon bark, clove bud, sweet fennel, fir needle, wintergreen, and wormwood, pennyroyal, camphor, rue, or bitter almond. I think I already said bitter almond, I'm sorry. So those essential oils should never, ever be put on your skin neat or directly on your skin. Here's some essential oils that I suggest that you avoid during pregnancy. During pregnancy, please stay away from bitter almond, basil, clary sage, clove bud, High sap, sweet fennel, juniper berry, marjoram, myrrh, rose, rosemary, sage, thyme, and wintergreen. Stay away from any of the hormonal oils, okay? Um, Here's another thing is there is a huge, huge controversy in the area of ingesting essential oils. Me personally, I know many, many people who do. I have absolutely no issue with it. However, I personally never, ever, ever suggest this since there is such a fine line between a therapeutic dose and a deadly dose, depending on where the oils are made, the temperatures involved, the strength, the sensitivity of the human body from one person to another. Um, there's just such a fine line that I always suggest that you don't do it. If you are somebody that does it and you feel great from it and it works for you, that's great. That's great. I personally will not ever recommend it. Um, if you are going to do this, though, please make sure you are educated, you guys. Please, please, please educate yourself in any area of anything before you're using it or, or suggesting it to others, okay? Here's another thing. Less is more when it comes to essential oils. When using essential oils, use the smallest amount of essential oil that will get the job done. If one or two drops are called for, for example, 
Don't use more than that, please. Essential oils are very concentrated, and I'm talking about when you have real essential oils, okay? As a side note, though, some companies or their representatives may suggest that you use as much as you want. But it's in their best interest that you go through them to buy your oils, and they want you to go through your oils faster so that you need to reorder more frequently, right? I'm not putting down any companies. I'm just saying this really, this stuff really does happen. Not everybody that sells essential oils would do this to you, but it does happen. Generally speaking, it takes a lot of plant material to obtain the botanicals essential oil by steam distillation. So it is very wasteful to use more essential oil than is needed for your particular application. Okay. Now, never, ever, ever, like I said, let children use essential oils without the presence of an adult. Most essential oils smell wonderful, and many essential oils, such as citrus, can smell like yummy and safe to drink to kids, right? But always, always keep your essential oils away from your children. Treat the oils like medicines, you guys, that are poisonous in unknowing hands. Another thing is essential oils are very flammable. Keep them away, out of the way of fire hazards. Let's, let's just say, let's keep your essential oils locked up like you would medicine. Um... Make sure you're buying essential oils that have the orifice reducers for this reason so that you can more easily count the drops. Um, do not, unless otherwise advised by an aromatherapist or an expert in the area, ever, ever, ever apply undiluted essential oils to children's skin. Ever. That I do not ever, ever recommend. I also do not ever recommend using essential oils as a food flavoring. And um, you, you can buy flavor oils for the purpose of food addition. They do sell those, um, and those are diluted properly. Those I absolutely recommend because you're going to get the properties of the essential oil in a safe way um, into your body. And that is amazing. That's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for healing. But this is the best part now. We've gotten through the safety. So now comes the fun part, okay? So when it comes to essential oils and energy, um, there's so many really cool metaphysical uses. Oh my goodness, I could go on all day. However, um, let's see. What do I want to tell you first? Well, let's let's talk about essential oils and the chakras first, okay? So, as most of us know, the chakras are our energy centers in our body. That's where energy goes in and out of our physical bodies, right? And many people feel that essential oils work well within the chakra system. I am one of them. I use them on my own. I use them on my clients. I use them on my family. They are amazing. So how you choose to practice is up to you, though. But I thought that we should include a little bit of information for you here, okay? So inside every human being is a system of nerves and sensory organs that understands the outside physical world, right? At the same time, within us resides a subtle system of the word chakra, of chakras, okay? And that's our energetic system. So each of these chakras is like um, an access point to a major nerve that branches from the spinal column. So in addition, the chakras also correlate to the levels of consciousness. 
um, developmental stages of life, body functions, and much, much, much more. So with that said, essential oils really, really work very well on to help us open, balance, charge, clear chakras. Um, so part of why essential oils work so well is um, their properties, but some of them work through vibration. Some of them work through um, the limbic system or through penetrating the skin. So let's just talk about using them vibrationally, okay? So aromatherapy is well known to a lot of people, you know, to assist people with their physical and emotional health and well-being. But there's this other side of aromatherapy, like the spiritual, magical, and mystical side, okay? The crazy thing is our ancestors were well aware of these aspects, and many religions and cultures were shaped by the earlier knowledge that the ancients had in regard to the aromatic and medicinal plants on the earth. Now, though, we've gotten so far removed from that. Um, but the good news is, is we do have the freedom to reaccess this once forbidden information and apply it into our lives without the fear of being burned at stake as a witch, right? So I'm going to tell you a few of the essential oils. Um, how they energetically work. And I want you to get your pen and paper and your notebook because this is going to be something that um, hopefully you will use moving forward. If you are an energy healer and you're doing Reiki on a client, there are certain essential oils that will help you do this, okay? So let me see where we're gonna start here. Um, so should we start with, let's actually, since we're already talking about the chakras, let's, uh, talk about which oils work with which chakra, okay? So, let's start with the crown chakra, okay? So the crown chakra, as we know, is the color violet. Um, it's located on top of your head. And that is associated with like your cerebral cortex, your, your central nervous system and your pituitary gland, okay? So that is like your information source, your understanding, your acceptance, your bliss. It's said to be your own place of connection to God, right? So this chakra of divine purpose um, and personal destiny a blockage here can manifest psychological problems. So, in order to keep this chakra balanced, charged, happy, and, you know, unlocked, free flowing, lavender is a wonderful one, um, angelica. Rosewood, frankincense, spikenard, sandalwood, and jasmine. Those are all my favorites for the crown chakra. Um, they all have high vibrations. Um, frankincense, sandalwood, um, and spikenard are all essential oils that are known and in, in the times of the bible that were used energetically back then um 
they are amazing and beautiful and wonderful. And I actually make um, chakra roll-ons where I blend um, some of these oils. People have really good results from them. So if anyone is interested in purchasing those from me, I would be happy to make you some. So let's move down to the third eye. So the third eye is indigo and, and, you know, kind of a combination of red and blue. And it's located at the center of your forehead at eye level or slightly above. This chakra um, is used to question the spiritual nature of our life. It is the chakra of question, perception, and knowing. It is concerned with inner vision, intuition, and wisdom. Your dreams for this life and, and recollections of other lifetimes are held here in this chakra. So a blockage in this chakra may manifest as problems like lack of foresight, mental rigidity, um, memory loss, and depression. Okay? So some good essential oils that vibrate very, very in alignment with the third eye chakra are lavender. That one's pretty much a universal one, as we most know. Um, Angelica also is another one that um, the vibration is just amazing for the third eye. Clary sage, sandalwood, marjoram, and patchouli. So also with the chakras, um, any plants, flowers, um roots whatever that are of that color will also vibrate and have the same frequency okay so for example um you know lavender is purple you know so the um crown and third eye chakra you know lavender is going to resonate with that fairly well if that makes sense um, so moving down to the throat chakra, um, that is blue, as everybody, most people know, it's blue. Um, it's located within the throat, and this is the chakra of communication, creativity, self-expression, expression, but also judgment. It is associated with your neck and your shoulders, your arms, your hands your thyroid and your parathyroid glands. This, this chakra is energetically concerned with the senses of inner and outer hearing, the synthesis of ideas and healing, transformation and purification. A blockage here can show up as creative blocks, dishonesty, or general problems in communicating one's needs to others. You don't want to have a problem communicating. So some essential oils that will help with that are um, lemon, mandarin orange, rose absolute, neroli, petit grain, wild chamomile, and lemongrass. A lot of the citrusy oils have the vibration that work well with the throat chakra. Um, the heart chakra is, you know, as we know, is green and it's located within your heart and it's the center of love, compassion, harmony, and peace. The Asians say that this is the house of the soul and I believe them. This chakra is associated with your lungs and your heart, your arms, your hands, and your thymus gland. When we fall in love through our heart chakra, then that feeling of unconditional love moves to the emotional center commonly known as the solar plexus. After that, it moves into the sexual center or base chakra where a strong feeling of attraction can be released. When these energies move back into the base chakra, as we have the desire to marry or settle down. So if we have a blockage in our heart chakra, it's not flowing so that you know, it can manifest as immune system problems or heart and lung problems or inhumanity or lack of compassion. We don't want that. So to keep your heart chakra vibrating where it's supposed to, we can use orange, lemon, cardamom, 
sandalwood patchouli wang lang jasmine and rosato those are all heart healing essential oils So the solar plexus is yellow, as we know, and it's located a few inches above the navel. Um, this chakra is concerned with your digestive system, with your muscles, with your pancreas, with your adrenals, and it's the seat of your emotional life. Your feelings of personal power, laughter, joy, and anger are all associated with this chakra. So your sensitivity, your ambition, your ability to achieve are all stored here. Blockages in this solar plexus chakra may manifest as anger, frustration, or lack of direction, or sense of victimization. So if you're feeling pretty victim-y, you can probably bet your solar plexus chakra is blocked and not free-flowing. So we want to get some essential oils that are going to help us get the flow going. So calendula is a great one. That's a yellow flower, so it makes sense, right? Lavender will help. Lemon, mandarin orange, pettit green, rose absolute, rosemary, and neroli are my favorite ones um, for that chakra. And moving down to the sacral the sacral chakra um, is orange as we know and it is located between the base of your spine and your navel it's associated with your lower abdomen your kidneys your bladder your circulatory system and your reproductive organs it's concerned with emotion. So this chakra represents desire and pleasure and sexuality, co-creation and creativity. Blockages here may manifest as emotional problems, compulsive or obsessive behavior, and sexual guilt. Nobody wants sexual guilt. So we're gonna use calendula, orange, lemon, cardamom, sandalwood, patchouli, langling, -lang, jasmine, and rosato. Those are all wonderful essential oils to balance that chakra. Now, the base of your spine is your root chakra, and that's red, and it's located by the perineum, or like the base of your spine. It is the closest to the earth, its function is concerned with earthly grounding and physical survival. This chakra is associated with your legs and your feet and your bones, your large intestines, and your adrenal glands. It controls your fight or flight response. And a blockage here may manifest as like paranoia, fear, procrastination, and defensiveness. So any vegetables, fruits, flowers, any plant that is a root vegetable herb, you know, roots, grounding, earth, those are the essential oils that would work great. Spikenard, sandalwood patchouli, frankincense, myrrh, ling ling, spruce, cinnamon, hoewood, Blue tansy, blue chamomile are all great ones, as well as like ginger root. Ginger root, ginger root is wonderful for the root chakra. So some, sometimes one or more of the main chakras can be out of balance, and the energies flowing through them may be blocked. So when this happens, it, it can affect literally your whole health, physically, mentally, or emotionally, okay? So how are we going to use these essential oils to help stimulate these energy centers and bring them back into balance, you ask? Well, honestly, like I said, the most useful oil of all 
four chakras is lavender. That can be used to energize and balance all seven. If you don't have any other essential oil, lavender is your friend. But some ways that you can use aromatherapy to balance, heal, and open the chakras is this. So diffuse a section of one or more essential oils that are beneficial for the chakras um, that you wish to work with. So diffuse them while relaxing or meditating or practicing yoga or listening to some peaceful music. So what I do is I will put whatever essential oils that I know are going to help cleanse and clear my chakras and I will have them diffusing while I'm meditating. That helps so much. Um, another way is to use aromatherapy and massage. Um, have, you know, your, your healer or, you know, your practitioner, or you can do it for other people. Um, connect with your chakras um, with these oils. And a lot of times me, when I'm working on somebody, I will put certain oils right on the chakras as I'm doing energy work and it enhances the the work and it helps unblock the energy flow. It really makes a difference. Um, another way you can do this is use the appropriate oils in a bath or, you know, a compress or, you know, um, use them as a roll on, like I said, on pulse points um, or, you know, direct topical application. You can also do inhalation, um, whichever method works best for you. Many of the essential oils here associated with each chakra overlap, if you didn't already notice that. So it may be a good idea to keep notes on which oil blends you use for which one, like I do, and know which ones you know work well for you. Remember also that people do react in different ways to essential oils, so it's important to use your intuition to try different blends and, you know, use whatever it is that works well for you or your client, okay? Um, in terms of Carrier oils, I'm just going to talk about carrier oils for just a second because it's really important, okay? Um, what is a carrier oil? Well, a carrier oil is a vegetable oil that's derived from a fatty portion of a plant, usually from like the seeds or the kernels or the nuts, right? So basically any of the vegetable, nut, or seed oils that people regularly use for cooking and food preparation could be used. However, it is important to note that most of the oils you typically find in the grocery stores are highly refined and contain solvents and petroleum you know, residues, which is what I was talking about, how dangerous these are for you. But on the other hand, the unprocessed oils, such as those that are marked organic and cold pressed, are the best ones for aromatherapy. Unprocessed oils are absolutely the best as they are the richest in vitamins, minerals, and proteins which nourish the skin. So, if you, when we're talking um, carrier oils, um, for normal skin, hemp seed, coconut, grape seed, sunflower, and sweet almond, you can mix with whatever essential oils you want to use on your skin. That's for normal skin. For oily skin, I suggest sweet almond, apricot oil, and jojoba. I can also use sunflower for oily skin. For dry skin, you want to use avocado, sweet almond, rosehip, and olive. Rosehip is amazing. I use that on my face in the winter because holy cow, we get dry, right? For sensitive skin, um, jojoba, sesame seed, sweet almond, and apricot. And then for maturing skin, jojoba, sesame street, sesame street, sesame seed, rosehip, almond, or apricot. Um, Calendula oil is also great as a body oil that helps speed up healing 
and moisturizes. Um, evening primrose oil is a great antioxidant oil, so it's often added to other carrier oils to prolong their shelf life, but that one is amazing for aging skin too. Um, when it comes to olive oil, olive oil works good for most preparations as long as it's extra virgin. Um, we need to be very careful because olive oil does have a shorter shelf life and it it smells terrible and it's no good anymore. You'll know though, just you know, use your use your discretion there. So um The biggest thing I want you guys to know, if you're using essential oils and mixing carrier oils, please, please, please avoid mineral oil. Mineral oil and petroleum jelly are byproducts of petroleum production, okay? They are not of natural or botanical origin and are not used with the scope of holistic therapy, aromatherapy. Mineral oil is used in baby oils and many commercially available moisturizers because it is an ex inexpensive oil to manufacture. However, it clogs pores big time. It prevents the skin from breathing naturally and it prevents essential oils from absorbing into your skin. It also prevents toxins from leaving your body through the natural process of sweating. So. I have actually read reports that it can be absorbed into the body and block vitamins from properly being utilized. The same concerns apply with petroleum jelly, but nobody's telling people this. It's just gross. It's just gross. So please, please, please stay away from mineral oil or petroleum, okay? Um, real quickly, um, storing your carrier oils and essential oils please store them in dark containers out of the sun out of heat okay very important for their shelf life so i think that that is about all the time i have today I do want to do another webinar um, where we get into more detail of how to use these, you know, in healing um, and energetically. So watch for that webinar that will be coming up. I hope that you have learned something here today. I got through most of what I think is extremely important for you to hear and know that I love you and I will be talking to you more soon. God bless you. Take care and please, please, please be careful with those essential oils. Okay. Have a great day.